Ring forts are one of the most common types of historical monument in Ireland. They can be found all over the Irish countryside, and even many towns and cities bear their names, Dunlera, Dungannon, Dundalk, etc. In folklore, or at least as it came to be forged in the 19th century, they were known as fairy forts, and there are all sorts of stories about them, and more specifically, what would happen if you damaged one. However, they were not always regarded as the dwelling places of fairies or the Duodedanon. Indeed, in the 1590s, one English officer believed they were fortifications that had been built by Danes. No fairies here, but they seemed far too sophisticated for the Gaelic Irish to have built. Ring forts remain an object of fascination to the present day. Indeed, there's a very interesting account on Instagram and Twitter called At Every Ring Fort, which is trying to post a photo of every ring fort in Ireland, posting one each hour. Around 47,000 ring forts have been identified in the country. Considering that many may have been lost through development or farming, there are originally much more than these. In fact, I do not think it is possible to identify the total number. Would there have been 50,000, 60,000 originally, or more? In addition, despite the folk tales about fairies, the destruction of ring forts is not something recent. Indeed, in Elizabethan times, the English damaged at least one by using it for a fort. In addition, many towns and villages are named after ring forts, but these ring forts have almost always been destroyed. Due to the sheer number of ring forts, in the high thousands as I've said, there are bound to be controversies about them. Indeed, some archaeologists have criticised the name ring fort, arguing that it is too vague, failing to distinguish between the different types. Indeed, in Irish, a variety of words are used which have different etymologies. These include doom, leash, rot, cahir, cashel, and others. There is some regional differentiation in the use of these words. While Dune is common in most of Ireland, it is rare in South Kerry for some reason. The date and status of the ring forts also play a role. Greater attention needs to be paid here. While it is relatively simple to identify a ring fort, as essentially it is a family homestead built in the early Christian period, there are some controversies or disputes about them. First, when they began to be built and when they stopped being used, Second, how to distinguish ring forts that were homesteads from others which had different uses, such as Cahargal and Carsevine. Can these still be classified as ring forts? Finally, the differences between ring forts and older constructions, such as Dunangasa. Even though ring forts are the most common archaeological feature in the Irish rural landscape, they are often misinterpreted. Recent important research into ring forts notably the work of Matthew Stout, has resulted in a better understanding of their relationship with Gaelic society. It's useful to talk a little about this. First, although many believe that ring forts go back to the beginnings of Irish history, to the Neolithic period or to the Iron or Bronze Age, they actually date from the early Christian period, primarily between the 5th and 9th centuries AD. Second, while they are often looked at as individual buildings, they existed in networks of ring forts, monastic settlements and other constructions. Many scholars argue that the name ring fort is a misnomer, as they did not have a military purpose as such and were not forts. Rather, they were homesteads, probably occupied by extended families. However, at the same time they were defensible, and the stone or earth walls did act as some type of fortification. While this would have not been enough to hold off a large force, it was probably enough for the most common type of fighting in Ireland when they were built, namely low-intensity cattle raiding. A stone wall or an earth wall and ditch would have presented a group of lightly armed raiders with a formidable obstacle, especially if there was a wooden palisade on top. Moreover, if there were a few ring forts in the area, as was very common, a strong indipped in-depth defence could exist. So, what is a ring fort? It is basically a family homestead. According to Stout, 
author of the best recent study on ring forts, they were mostly constructed in a 300 year period between the 7th and 9th centuries. Stout also traces them to the growth of the importance of an economy based on cows. He says that they were, quote, designed to protect the principal asset of these early medieval farmers, the cow, end quote. Most were small in size, around 30 meters in diameter on average. Usually, the settlement was surrounded by a bank with a palisade on top, with a gap in it for entry. Although the name Ringfort is easy to remember and has stuck, it is not the most accurate, as I've said. They were designed to protect cattle and the family against raiders. They are not forts which were supposed to guard or hold territory. Most ring forts would have been a single farmstead. In other words, they were occupied by a single extended family, which would have been largely self-sufficient based on the raising of animals, especially cattle. Metal and textile production also occurred in some ring forts. Moreover, as I will discuss below, ring forts occur in networks. It's rare to just see one ring fort in an area, there are usually others nearby. The distribution of ring forts varies quite a bit. According to Stout, North Munster, East Connacht, North East Leinster and East Ulster are the areas with the highest distribution. On the other hand, North West Ulster, West Connacht and Leinster have the lowest areas. Although the latter may be better to be called East to East Coast, South Munster is labelled by Stout as a median area of density However, this includes much of Kerry and a large part of Cork. Due to the mountains, South Kerry, or Evera, has a lower number of ring forts. Only 247 have been identified in Evera, though many of these have been damaged. 55% of these are rats and 38% castles. It is not sure what the remaining 7% are, as it can be surprisingly difficult to distinguish them when they are overgrown or unexcavated. Lacan in Carsevine, for example, was thought to be an earthen fort before being excavated, as most of it was buried or hidden by plants. However, it was discovered that it was a cashel. I will return to the types of ring forts in a bit. As mentioned already, the emergence of ring forts seems to be associated with economic changes, notably an increase in the number of cattle, as well as the rise in the importance of these. While the period before Christianization is referred to sometimes as the Iron Age lull, as Gaelic society seems to have gone through a period of stagnation, the post-Christian period seems to have witnessed a boom, or at least to have been a period of economic, social and cultural expansion and change. While too often Gaelic society is presented as something that rarely changed, that was the same in 1500 AD as it was in 500 AD or even 500 BC, like any society, it changed over time. Christianity was one such major change, and there were many others, including an expansion of agricultural activity, especially dairy cattle and forest clearance, a new type of plough and a horizontal mill improved the productivity of agriculture and probably resulted in a population increase. It's been speculated that this led to the construction of many thousands of new ring forts. Ring forts, Christianity and improved agriculture thus led to a transformation of Irish society. Ring forts are a product of a particular period, from the 6th to the 9th century. While some constructions that resemble ring forts have a much earlier date, such as some hill forts or coastal forts, Dunangus is the best example here, Ring forts are different from hill forts and have to be differentiated from them. However, this is not always easy, as some sites were used and reused in different periods, such as Dunengus already mentioned and the famous Grenon Alig in Donegal. It's also worth noting that while in the 19th century, or perhaps a little earlier, the idea of fairy fort took hold, with the fairy essentially being a transformed version of the Tua de Danon, ring forts date from the Christian period. They post-date the period when the Tua de Danon would supposedly have built these places. Stout also argues that by the 9th century, ring forts had fallen out of use. Again highlighting how Gaelic society changed, he says that this was due to a, quote, marked shift in the economy, end quote, 
based on the diversification of agriculture. This involved the emergence of a grain-growing economy, evidenced by the widespread construction of mills in the 9th century. However, some ring forts were transformed into platform ring forts, which held a higher status and were probably the seats of local elites. Also part of this, according to Stout, were the construction of large stone forts in the west, northwest and southwest, such as Grinonalig, where a large castle was built on an older hill fort, though he also points to Dunengese. This dates back much longer, but was rebuilt at the time. There were probably other factors in this change, such as the incursions and settlement of the Norse, which resulted in new forms of warfare in Ireland, and the emergence of urban settlements. Another was the rise of powerful lords, leading to a form of centralization. There were probably other factors, such as new forms of settlement. However, this is still an area of speculation for now. It's useful to bring in Elizabeth Fitzpatrick's critique here. She says some ring forts remained in use much longer than Stout says, some as late as the 17th century, giving the example of some ring forts in the Burren. However, this does not exactly contradict Stout's argument. In a way, it strengthens and complements it. The vast majority of ring forts were built in the 300 year period highlighted by Stout. Afterwards, a new type of stone fort emerged, a larger and more elaborate ring fort, which were more than fortified homesteads. Some of these were used to the early modern period. Most were not. Equally, structures similar in appearance to ring forts, but predate, predating them, were built hundreds of years previously. Nonetheless, most ring forts were built and used between the 7th and 9th centuries. However, Fitzpatrick's critique of the word ring fort is very valid. It's very easy to confuse ring forts built in a period identified by Stout with others that came earlier or later. Nowadays, they might appear to the untrained eye to be similar, but they are fundamentally different in terms of function. Furthermore, as mentioned above, even ring forts from the classic period can be divided into different types. One such division is between castles and rats. The difference between these is very simple. A castle is constructed from stone and surrounded by a stone wall. A rat, on the other hand, is made from earth. It's a simple but essential distinction. Quite often the availability of stone in a large enough quantity is what determined the material used in the construction of the ring fort. Another division is between simple homesteads, the vast majority, and a high status ring fort such as Cahargal. A third type is between what are technically referred to as univalid ring forts, those with just one circular bank around them, and bi or multivalid ring forts, those with two or more banks. The vast majority are univalid, between 80 and 90 percent in some regions. Ring forts with two or more banks are in the minority and seem to have been of higher status. Probably, they were more than just simple homesteads. Finally, it's also possible to distinguish them in terms of size. Most ring forts are circular or oval. Rats usually consist of an earthen bank, often built using clay obtained by digging a ditch around it. In South Kerry, cashels usually do not have a ditch around them. They also tend to be located at the western end of the peninsula, due to the availability of stone. Elsewhere, rats dominate. Perhaps surprisingly, cashels in Evora and elsewhere tend to be slightly smaller than rats. Probably this is because using earth as a basic building material allows larger walls to be built. Most ring forts had buildings inside them. There is an interesting difference here between rats and cashels. 36% of rats and 47% of cashels contain remains of houses. While the high rate of ring forts without buildings may seem somewhat surprising, it could be that in many of those which now lack internal buildings, these were constructed with wood or other perishable materials, meaning that no trace of these can now be found without excavation. Ring forts rarely occurred alone. Almost always there were other ring forts nearby, Using documentary sources, Stout advances a model for ring fort distribution, with a high status ring fort occupied by a high ranking lord, such as an Aura Forgill, surrounded by ring forts held by individuals of lower status. 
Some of these ring forts may have been leased to the Okara, the lowest type of free person without any land of their own. Others may have been held by Boara, a type of free person with a small amount of land. In this network, the ring fort held by the Era for Girl would have provided some sort of protection to the others. High status ring forts acted as foci for the less powerful ring forts, providing a defense in depth. It should also be noticed that the density of ring forts varied a lot. In South Kerry, it was quite low. This was presumably due to the mountainous region of the Ivra Ivrahaka Peninsula. It is also probably indicative of a low population. Third, since ring forts were overwhelmingly based on pastoral agriculture, they were usually located on better drained and less forested upland areas, avoiding boggy areas and remaining below 355 metres. Ring forts can be found everywhere in Ireland, whether stone castles or rots or earth walls. It's worth emphasising once again that these were mostly simple homesteads and mostly bent, built between 600 and 900 AD and related to a cattle-based economy. Some, such as Cahargal and Carsevine, were different, the seats of local kings or lords. It's important to remember that they were built in networks, though the density of these networks varied a lot. There are castles and rots ever in Ireland. Some have been excavated, the vast majority have not. Nevertheless, they are almost always places worth visiting. They offer an excellent window into the past. Unfortunately, many are in danger. Although they are protected by law, at least theoretically, in practice they are often threatened with damage or destruction, whether due to building, new methods of farming, or individuals damaging them. Like all parts of Ireland's past, its heritage, they are deserving of respect and protection. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. And if you can, please help support the channel by buying me a coffee. The link is in the description. If there are any periods in Irish history or historic places you would like me to make a video about, please let me know in the comments. Slán agus gurumá gud give galea.